here some white watercolor ground because this is too pink for my taste. <laughs> I know I said I was going to dive into embracing pink, but it's a little bit too much for me. So I want to mute that pink with some diluted white watercolor ground. So I'm mixing about 50% water into it. And I'm just using the lid of my container to do that mixing. And now I'm going to just brush that into this background area. Blending things in. Coming into negative space around these little trees. Blending the edges outward. I want it to look like a misty, foggy layer here. Doing my best to softly blend it with the surrounding stuff. And I'm going to take a smaller brush now. So that I can get into the negative space around the tree branches. In and among this stuff. I have to work quickly because the watercolor ground dries fast. So you see I'm, I'm doing a lot of just quick, short, swiping brush strokes and constantly moving over the areas that I need to blend uh, until I have them at the stage that I want before I stop brushing on them. Because if I leave it alone, then it will dry in a stage that I don't like. Carefully working in the negative space around the branches here. I like that muted pink a bit more and I'm probably going to layer some other colors over it once this white watercolor ground dries 
but I wasn't feeling that really, really bright, bright pink before. I'm sorry, I just can't. Back to working on the foreground chi. I have, again, a dark mixture of mostly Payne's Gray, but tinted with some of the green. And working in the edges of the tree. Some of the white watercolor ground overlaid the previous layer, but that's actually, it actually adds this gorgeous depth then to those portions and it makes it look like it's, it's hidden and pushed back in uh, receding further. So it actually works out quite well. And this becomes the new foreground element. twiggy tendrils that reach out from the tree. shadowing the underside of the foliage. It's a subtle shift from what's above and what's over here, but this, I'm just doing black right here to give it that volume so that you feel the dome of the foliage above and this deeply shadowed under area. Adding some more of the surrounding foliage, surrounding bushes and smaller shrubby plants. taking some of this white and 
trailing these little wispy things in the background. Wispy things. Yeah, I know that's not terribly descriptive. Um, <laughs> I am going to add these little will-o'-the-wisps in the background or sparkly creatures. But first, let's pave the way with some of this. I could use the white gel pen, but I want the lines to be more delicate even than pens can accomplish. more delicate and also less defined. So with the watercolors, it's it's not gonna look so stark white once it dries. You can see even as these lines dry, they become much more melded into the background. All right, and then I take my white gel pen and trailing through these little bits are going to be my little will-o'-the-wisps clustered in around the tree densest right underneath the branches and then fading out towards the edges as if they're all gathering close to this giant of a tree. I'm not making them go straight across. There's actually a little bit of an angle as they come from the bottom right. taking my brush with some water and blending the larger wisps so that they have more of a glow to them rather than a hard line edge. This gives them illusion of being even brighter than they are because the softened edges make it feel like they are glowing and not just white dots. few more of them here towards the center.